I did this piece for Mother Jones recently and put it up on my blog and got a lot of feedback and uh, many questions about, okay, so you did this 3D realistic thing and it looks just like a photograph. Why not just take a picture of it? And I think that's a great question. I think that the simple answer is, well, I do 3D art, so that's kind of how I solve my visual problems. But still, I think we've got a great question here. It's like, when when is it best to take a photograph and when is it best to do a 3D rendering? Well, I don't think there's really a right answer for either one. What I want to do is uh, sort of uh, compare some photographs with 3D renderings so you can see what advantages there are to um, the 3D rendering side. As far as photography, um, I think that uh, we'll have to explore that on a different video. But uh, in this case, I want to highlight some things that are really uh, advantageous about 3D. Now, there's one thing I really don't want to do, and that's to start a 3D slash photography war. This is not meant at all to add heat to uh, this topic. Rather, I'd like to add light to sort of explain, you know, what, what 3D can do and what's unique about it. I definitely don't feel like I'm replacing photographers. There's definitely a place for photography, and uh, there is considerable overlap. And rather than saying one's better than the other, um, I think that you know they both uh, should uh, you know express their strengths. And uh, I think that uh, some uh, a video a video about uh, what's great about photographing bottles would be good. But that's not what we're trying to do here. This is basically an exploration of the strengths of rendering a bottle in 3D. So let's get to it. Here's a photograph that I quickly took just for a template. It's not a real studio photograph, but even there you can see that the cap isn't perfect. Um, the, there's little scratches and that sort of thing on the cap. And so when rendering in 3D, you're able to create sort of this pristine look. And that's the look we were kind of going for with this uh, magazine illustration, which um, needed to look really graphic. So when I got the bottle, I very carefully peeled off the label and put it on my scanner and scanned it and quickly realized it wouldn't work. It was too low res. The actual label for this bottle is pretty coarse. It's around 80 dots per inch. So we got a high res Photoshop file that was used to create that label. And in 3D, we're able to project that onto the artwork. Um, so it looked like it was part of the bottle. The same thing happened with the, the type on the label. Um, it has this really cool gold foil, but uh, the photograph uh, accentuates the imperfections of it, where the foil is folded or that sort of thing. So again, I built uh, a clean version in Photoshop that was very high res that would hold up on the magazine cover and projected that on the virtual bottle to get a really clean look. And we needed no touch up uh, of the final image. Another advantage of 3D is you can create any environment. This environment is what was used for the bottle and you can see all the reflections in the bottle when you take a look at this uh, environment. So here is the bottom of the bottle and you can see those highlights uh, being mimicked from that reflection map. This can be done in photography, but it's nice in Photoshop. I can just kind of paint and move things around and, and, and change the highlights uh, pretty easily. Here's the photograph, and again, this is not a studio photograph. This is just for a template, but uh, controlling the highlights and the reflections is a little bit more challenging with the photograph. Okay, that's a wrap on my take on what's great about 3D and how it's good for projects like this. Uh, in no way am I trying to one-up photography to say that 3D is better or uh, that photography couldn't do a project like this. It certainly can. You know, if, uh, I consider myself a, a photographer. I've got some great equipment and really enjoy photography. Um, but it's a different approach. Uh, if I were to do this with a camera, I'd have quite a bit of Photoshop work to do afterwards. The cool thing about doing it in 3D is that there was no touch-up done. This is the final render and um, the client could quickly make changes and he really did. We had a lot of last minute changes. So it worked out great in 3D. So I hope that uh, this helped 
shed some light on why to do a project like this in 3D and why I chose to do it that way. So keep the comments coming online and thanks a lot.